hello and welcome to a very special episode of the alternative car show and we have been invited by 6r4.net to their track day now this is a really big deal and i can't tell you how grateful i am so you'll get to see 6r4s rs 200s and various other cars in action at this secret location and i feel incredibly privileged to have been invited along and you can come along with me and see some of the cars
the car you see behind me is the famous Autoplaz 6R4 that is owned by Dan Elmore who is one of the coordinators for 6R4.net but this is the gentleman who originally bought the car brand new and remember these cars are worth between 200,000 and 300,000 now Listen carefully for how much he paid for it originally. Steve Harris. And we'll start with the 6R4. Because you bought a brand new 6R4 when they were brand new. I did, yeah, from Cowley. I went there and done the deal with them and uh, brought it home to do a lot of modifications and a lot of racing in it, yeah. So tell me the story of getting the 6R4, because didn't you sort of <laughs> spot it at a show and go and have work with your dad or something? Yeah, we were at the NEC doing a motor show, and uh, I knew that Austin Rover were there at the time, and I managed to talk my dad into getting a check and going to buy a car. And when I got to the stand, they said, oh no, we can't sell them anymore for that price. We're not sponsoring the event anymore. We're not giving away free uh, Montegos and things like that we're we're pulling back a bit but the cars have gone down in price for seventeen and a half thousand pound instead of 88 and uh, so I said okay I have three and my old man said no you can't you only have one still so I ended up buying it and then going to Cowley looking at the big box of cars that were all square together and he said don't pick any from the middle because they're not finished we've just had a 200 head count he said pick one from the outside and we can tell you what needs doing to it to get it uh, up and running so he said don't start it because the engines like need modification before you can run it so we ended up doing that and getting some spare parts with it and took it home to, to see what we had really i was just i had a mark ii escort before that so this was a big a big jump up really but we put it in the company colours and went racing. Now, tell us about the company, because your dad's company was, was something in the 80s that we've all seen the work. <laughs> yeah, it was an uh, autoplast, and we used to make the... Uh, he actually invented this rear visor on the back window of a lot of cars. We did 600 different models. We couldn't make enough to keep the world happy. They, they were like the louvered rear wing yeah it was a yeah a rear louvered it did nothing in this country but in hot countries and cold countries it kept the heat off in hot countries and it kept the snow from icing up your rear screen in sweden and so volvo saab and all that used to buy a lot of them and uh, so, so you used to, to to run it in the autoplaz colors yeah it was yeah, it was and in was the that rallying or? That was rallying, yeah. I used to rally it. I think I did 17 events in the first year I had it. So, so the Welsh and things like that. So we had a, a lot of fun in it, a lot of fun. And then you did the Birmingham Super Prix. Yeah, we got asked. That was a, quite a daunting event, really. I think we were the only one of the only races that got on and did. They had, I think, Formula 3 there. They had the touring cars. But they kept crashing and it seemed like the 6R4s, fantastic event around the streets of Birmingham. That was uh, one of my first introductions to motorsport. So it was very good and still one of the spark plugs, uh, the electrode broke off of it. So we had a bit of a misfire, but we carried on. It was good fun. And a young guy called Dan Elmore saw the car at the Birmingham Super Prix. And, and right. years later he bought it. Yeah, apparently I didn't know that obviously at the time, but yeah, and it's a bit of an honour really for him to do it in my colours and my name on the side and everything. It's always a bit emotional when I see it. But yeah, fantastic that it lives on. Yeah, because I saw I saw um, uh, the car being taken off the transports today and it's sort of you the look on your face was fantastic because <laughs> it's like seeing seeing your your, your long lost child yeah yeah well it was well the wife said you either have the car or me and i got in the car and drove off <laughs> <laughs> so you've turned up with a quieter car today tell us a bit about the, how, how you how, how you got, got the rs200 and tell us a bit about the car well i started after getting out of motorsport for quite a few years i uh 
met Pat Duran again, who I used to rally. He had a 6R4 and we used to go rallying together and share service crews. And he said, why don't you come and do some rallycross? So I thought, oh, no, I'm too old. And, but he took me into it and we ended up uh, with a supercar, a um, Citroen C4 and various other DS3s and Focuses that we used to race and my two sons as well used to race. And then it all, I got a bit older and my reactions got a bit slower. So he said, come on, let's go and do retros. So he said, I've got a spare tub if you want to find an engine to put in it. And I couldn't find an engine, but I did manage to find a whole car that had never ever been finished in Essex. So uh, Jeff Page. And we, uh, we ended up buying that. Then Pat and Liam down in Devon put it all together for me and put the right parts together. Julian Godfrey did the engine at that stage and we got it all together and, and went into retro rallycross. So, so tell me a little bit about the car. So it's uh, uh, gently tuned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, we tried to keep it. It's got uh, probably about 450 horsepower going up to about 700 plus horsepower, but we don't use it too much of the 700. But uh, yeah, when we, we found it, it was like a, a brand new car. All the mirrors and the lights were still in their boxes and it was just completely unfinished, no hubs on it. So we put it all together, made it left-hand drive because that's what I was used to at the time and put it all together to do some rallycross. But yeah, we have a lot of fun. We did Nitro a couple of three weeks ago there, big jumps, lots of air. But uh, we have a lot of fun. We do rounds in France and we've been to Barbados with it. So it's better going on a holiday and laying on the beach. And people who watch this, these are their dream cars. They grew up with watching Group B. What's, what, I mean, how hard is it to keep a Group B car running now? It is quite hard. We're, we've cast our own diffs because there's no more diff casting. There's crown wheel and pinions that Julian makes. So yeah, it's quite, it's a full time, every heat we do, it tries to rattle apart and we have to take a team of mechanics with us to tighten everything back up and it, the suspension rattles, the uh, drive shafts, everything comes loose all the time on it. So it's a high maintenance car. And uh, how many miles did you say you got from the full boost as well? <laughs> <laughs> how many hours? It probably only lasts two, three hours on full boost of between rebuilds, yeah, yeah. So each tires as well, we probably only get about 30 miles out of a set of tires if we're on gravel and tarmac together. So yeah, it's an expensive hobby, really. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, compared with the Ferrari, it's, it's, it's completely unique, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's a lot more fun, yeah, yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you very, very much. No problem, you're welcome.
And it's not just rally cars that are here in the paddock, there's some touring car royalty as well. Um, I'm Fiona Leggett, uh, I used to race in the British Touring Cars uh, some 13 years ago, um, so that's the first time I've been out in the car since then. Well we've got some footage of you going around the track, how did it feel to be back in the car? Oh absolutely brilliant, yeah it was, yeah, I've just forgot like how it feels to be in the car, you know really twitchy, everything's so positive in it and whatever, it was, yeah I was buzzing. So, so is that sort of started the itch to get back racing or? No, I don't think so. I think I'll uh, leave where I left off, but my son's going to start now, so uh, he can take up the legacy. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And uh, you're here with two cars? Yeah, well, we've got actually got three. There's the 6R4, right. the Touring car, and the Renault 5 Turbo. Right, so uh, how come uh, the, the, the three cars, is there a story? That, uh, uh, well, my daddy just kind of collects cars, so he's got about 15. So this is just a selection of some of the ones that he's got. Um, so, yeah, so last year he brought his uh, Lancia Integrale full-spec rally car, which is absolutely awesome. But this year he's brought the Renault 5 and obviously the 6R4, because it's the 6R4 day. Well, um, I'm doing a DVD on the 6R4, so that's part that's part of the reason why I'm here, but I'm also doing this for my YouTube channel. So right. So uh, I'm sure the fans will be glad to see what you're up, what blast you've been from up the to. past. <laughs>
In a Group B DVD that I'm putting together, Dan Elmore introduced us to his car. Here's what he said back then. So my name's Dan Elmore and this is my Metro 6R4. And the first thing I've got to say, I know your story, you saw this car when you were a kid. And I saw the 6R4s in 1986 at Albert Dock and the overnight stop and it was sort of like that for me was the car Tony Pond was the man yeah. but you saw this at an event a couple of years later didn't you yeah so I was at um, the RAC in 86 at Shield Forest and uh, exactly the same you know Tony Pond English car underdog all of that you know oh, you know and the noise the noise is what did it for me they're just so unique in modern terms the Subaru, the boxer engine on the Subaru, you hear that going down the road and you know what it is. Well, you know what a 6R4 is from, that bark, you know. Um, so that's kind of where I started to, to light the car from. And then I was aged 14 and I went to um, Birmingham Super Prix in 88 and watched the 6R4 race and this car was in the race. And then oh, roll on to 2015 and I bought this car and we were restoring it and I thought, right, I want to find a, a livery for it, an original livery that it was in. And as I researched it, um, it turned out I'd watched it race at the Super Prix in 88. And so that's why we put it in this livery. So this is more than a labour of love. It's like finding your true love after seeing a photograph of a years ago. <laughs> kind of like that, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I spent ten, 10 years looking for a car. And when I got one, that it turned out to be one that, that I kind of knew. So it was amazing. So you found a unique way of keeping your your uh, interest in 6R4s bubbling away during those 10 years you were looking. For sure. And that is fantastic in itself, if you want to t explain sure. about that and promote it as well, because we're happy to promote yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd seen this car as a teenager... Um, my dad had competed in rallying and things like that, but I'd, I'd not really got into motorsport and what have you. And then in the late 90s, I started working with a, a friend of mine called Colin Casey, and he owned a 6R4. And once I'd been in it, it was too late then. I knew that was that was it. That was what I was after. Um, Colin had his car for a while and then sold it, and, uh, and then said to me, well, I have this website, 6R4.net, you know what? I had it when I had the car, I don't really do anything with it. Did you want it? I know you're an enthusiast. So I took that on uh, with a friend of mine, Nicky Linden, and there's now a, a third guy, David Sims, who's, who's well known in 6R4 circles. He helps us as well. And uh, so the three of us run that site, and yeah, we've been running that since the late 90s. And it took me till 2015 to buy a car. But yeah, all the way along in there, we've gradually got to know all the owners. And event organisers come to us and go, oh, we'd love a 6R4 for, for this show here. And so we, we contact the owners and say, if anybody wants to go to that, then they're looking for a car and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, it's great to be kind of part of that network. You know, I, when uh, in the first couple of years that I had it, I couldn't go to an event without somebody going, is that the one that's for sale? No, that's not for sale. Oh, well, how much would it be for sale for, you know? And so you kind of think, well, if you don't want to sell it, now, is there a point where you'd give in and go, all right, that's ridiculous, but if you'll give me that for it, then I'll sell you it, because I can go buy another one. So, you know... Um, don't give the number, you'll hurt yourself. I had that... No, no, don't <laughs> no, no. But I had that thought for a while, and then um, another part of the reason we put this delivery on was I went to that event with my parents, and we lost my dad last year, Yeah. and it was him that was into most sport, that got us into most sport. And he was the one who, took, who suggested we went to Birmingham Super Prix. And, and that happened in lockdown. And during lockdown, we'd already decided to do a livery. So it kind of all fitted together. Please tell me he's had a chance to have a ride in the car. He's been in it. Oh, yes. Yes. He's yes. been in it on the road. And we came back down, when it came back from going out on the road, and he said, I really like that. So I went on a track day, and I took him out in the track day. And then the first lap, he was going, oh, that's got some power. It's a bit quicker than my old Mini. He had a Mini Cooper in the 70s. Um, and on the second lap, we were going down the back straight, and he's going, well, go on then, son, get past him. So it only took him a lap, and he was in his 80s, but it took him a lap, and he was back in the groove. 
right, let's have these guys down the straight and get past them. And so, yeah, that's a moment you can't buy now. That that no. moment is, you and know. And if I did ever sell this, I won't have that. Yeah. Even if I sold this and bought another one, I won't have that. Yeah. So. And you know this car. You know everything about it. You wouldn't have to go through all the. Yeah. yeah. There's some there's some really random history that came up with this car, and I've added to some of it as well. But so this car's second owner was Will Gollop. Right. Yeah, European rallycross. <laughs> I mean, in Mr. the 90s, Six R Four. Yeah, in, 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 I used to watch rallycross on. Yeah, me too. On World of Sport every weekend. Or Will you know, Gollop and his is yeah, what was it? Still twin Turbo. One twin Turbo. Yeah. God. Well, this one wasn't rallycross, but he owned it. <laughs> um, before that, the first owner that had it, that had it in this colours, he let Richard Burns drive it, World Rally Champion. So, uh, you know, that's got some incredible history there. While I've owned it, Harry Toyburn's driven it with me in it, scared the life out of me. Um, it was funny, he was so fast, and then he said, was that all right, or should we go faster? And I was like, <laughs> nope, that's enough. Um, so Harry's driven it, and Craig Breen, uh, mm -hmm. Hyundai World yeah. Rally driver, he's driven it. Um, and this is the only one to have been to Buckingham Palace. We did the Queen's 90th birthday. They had one car from every year of the 90 years, British car, and uh, and we were we were there for that. So. You can't ever sell this car. And then you obviously can't. in the last 12 months, Stig's dad's driven it, and and Car SOS Fuzz has driven it, and Tim Shaw's been in it, and I've driven Fuzz and then Fuzz drove it. So it's got some you know it's got some history to it now. This is only a fraction of the footage from the 6R4.net track day. We actually are putting together a DVD on the 6R4. So keep watching the channel and details will be up and shown as soon as it's available. Out now on DVD, the first official DVD for Lombard Rally Bath, including an interview with rally legend no, no, David no, no, Llewellyn. No, 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 no. Uh, for many years now, I've only been <laughs> look for the tash. Ah, that's it. <laughs> and then that's you'll it. know which one it is. <laughs> Get your copy from www.nwinsmodels.co.uk
given special permission to come here to Pro Drive to film a car that was driven by one of my rallying heroes, Jimmy McRae. And you know, it was a year I'm glad I never missed. The first time I drove the Metro was from the van to the scrutineering at the, break really? the breakdown rally, yeah. <laughs> And with rally cars still buzzing around, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please click on like if you've enjoyed it and please subscribe. It really does help us and you'll get to know when we have other videos come on stream. <laughs>